<laughs> Get on up now. Ow. We got to get on up. Everybody grab somebody. Turn this mother into a party. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Okay, I done lost my notes. And um that happens from time to time. Um we begin to forget all types of shit. So I want y'all to hold on one minute. Okay, I'm back. I hope Miss LaBeige is going to try to bust out because she she really trips when I make these videos. So hopefully she will cooperate so I can get this done because the topic I want to talk about today is really, really, it hits, it hits home for me. And for a lot of us, especially um, those of us who have, and those out there who have um, what they call daydreams, or maybe have taken acting classes or studied theater, um, who um, actually get paid, some of you uh, get paid pretty well to disassociate from your self character and uh, take on another one, which is a form of schizophrenia. But however, it's not what we're here to talk about. I'm here to talk about uh, this associative disorders. And this article came down from the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Um, overview, treatment, support, Okay, disassociative disorders are characterized by an involuntarily escape from reality, characterized by a disconnection between thoughts, identity, consciousness, and memory. People from all age groups, racial, ethnic, and social economic backgrounds can experience a dissociative disorder. It is estimated that 2% of people experience disassociative disorders with women being more likely than men to be diagnosed. Almost half of adults in the United States experience at least one depersonalization slash derealization episode in their lives, with only 2% meeting the full criteria for chronic episodes. So what that's telling me is it's more of the population that experiences this that want to even talk about it. So that's why I said um, this is nothing new. Now, this is the best. Never mind. Let me just go ahead. The symptoms of a disassociative disorder usually first develop as a response to a trauma or traumatic event such as abuse or military combat to keep those memories under control. Stressful situations can worsen symptoms and can cause problems with functioning in everyday activities. However, the symptoms of a person's experiences will depend on the type of disassociative disorder that that person may have. Treatment for dissociative disorders often involves psychotherapy and medication. Though finding an effective treatment plan can be difficult, many people are able to live healthy and productive lives. Now, I am going to give you the symptoms again because I did this particular video before and the reason why I'm doing it again because I have a few <laughs> Um, theater or uh, lesbians who uh, took offense to this last time I read it 
I wanted to read it again. I wanted to make some of the same comments. However, I want to put a twist on it. And that is, the difference is when you're studying for a role and you're purposely beginning to disassociate, and that is your focus, and there's a purpose behind the madness. I'm not saying putting a judgment on it one way or the other if it's good or bad. However, I'm I'm making a um, statement that you're conscious of it. You're conscious that you are actually disassociating. You are taking your character and putting it down, and putting taking on another energy, another entity, especially if you're doing a uh, biopic or something to that degree. However, there are people who don't have a focus to do this. At least not an immediate. You, you know you know what I'm saying? Not an immediate um, focus or, you know, job sake or the role, I should say. Um, you know, we can go deep down this rabbit hole, but when you have a lot of mental health problems such as depression, anxiety, and thoughts of suicide, having these signs of disassociative disorders may come more frequently. Um, if you have a sense of detachment, a detachment from your emotions or emotional numbness, a lack of sense um, of self-identity, um, significant memory loss, of specific times, people, and events, you know, the main symptom is difficult to remember important information about oneself. Disassociative amnesia may surround a particular event such as combat or abuse, or more rarely, information about identity and life history. The onset for an amnesia episode is usually sudden. And an episode can last minutes, hours, days, rarely months, uh, or years. There is no average age for the onset set or percentage, and a person may experience multiple episodes throughout their life. That's disassociative amnesia. And then you have depersonalization disorder and disassociative identity disorder. The depersonalization says this order involves ongoing feelings of detachment from actions, feelings, thoughts, and sensations as if they are watching a movie. That's kind of like a deep, you know, depersonalization. The, your life is here. What's happening to you is here. You're sitting back bearing witness, I guess. You, you, you're like you're watching a movie and it's your life. Sometimes other people and things may feel like people and things in the world around them are unreal derealization. A person may experience depersonalization and derealization or both. A, symptoms can last just a matter of moments or return at times over the years. An average onset at age is 16, although depersonalization episodes can start anywhere from early as mid-childhood. Less than 20% of people with this disorder start experiencing episodes after the age of 20. Um, you know, I when you call it a disorder, I would imagine that it's chronic. Um, because it's a day it's having a deja vu moment all the time. All twenty four hours a day. And a lot of y'all can relate to wow, it seems like I've been here before, I did this before. Wow, bam. Either you can call recall whether you did or you didn't, but to have that constant feeling about everything is almost like a depersonalization. Lastly, disassociative identity disorder, formerly known as multiple personality disorder. This disorder is characterized by alternating between multiple identity. A person may feel like one or more voices are trying to take control in their head. Often these identities may have unique names, characteristics, mannerism, and voices. Um, alter egos. Yes, yes, yes. Like Sasha Fierce and Beyonce. Uh, you, you can look at it however you want to. And I'm not saying that for the beehive to come out and attack me. I'm saying that because she makes reference to that. Um, and I have no problem with it at all. People with um, 
disassociative disorder will experience um, gaps. He said, often these identities may have unique names, characteristics, mannerism, and voices. People with this will experience gaps in memories of the everyday events, personal information, and trauma. Women are more likely to be ignited, be diagnosed, I'm sorry as they are more frequently present with acute disassociative symptoms. Men are more likely to deny the symptoms, and so it doesn't mean that they don't have it. I want to repeat that. Men are more likely to deny symptoms and trauma histories and commonly exhibit more violent behavior rather than amnesia or uh, fugue states. This can lead to elevated false negative diagnosis. You know, I always told my um, brothers, you know, uh, I remember having this conversation, and I do believe that because women are so less likely to be um, looked at as, an, as abusers, that I wonder how many men are sitting in some prisons right now because they have been taught and trained to deny symptoms uh, of their trauma. And they don't talk about it. And when you start burying trauma, it just makes you an animal. And so a lot of um, dealing with your mental health that way, a lot of people call it um, alpha. Uh, I'm, I got alpha energy. And they're clearly not in any, shouldn't be in any leadership type of role. Because a man that is a leader is a difference than a man that's out of control and putting it behind being an alpha okay so when you are pushed and when you are trained to deny symptoms of trauma whether you've been molested you know whatever your trauma history is you will exhibit more violent behavior that's I believe why a lot of men are sitting behind in jail right now because Maybe they got a hold to some borderline or histrionic type of partner and they pushed them to a brink where all of those denial uh, symptoms pushed down, rose to the top at the wrong moment and the result was not good. You know, the social disorders usually develop as a way of feeling, of dealing with trauma. Disassociative disorders most often form in children exposed to long-term physical, sexual, emotional abuse. Natural disasters or combat can also um, cause disassociative disorders. Doctors diagnose disassociative disorders based on a review of symptoms and personal history. A doctor may perform tests to rule out physical conditions that can cause symptoms such as memory loss and a sense of un reality. For example, head injury, brain lesions and tumors, sleep deprivation or intoxication. If physical causes are ruled out, a mental health specialist is often consulted to make an evaluation. Many features of disassociative disorders can be influenced by a person's cultural background as well. In the case of disassociative identity disorder, the disassociative amnesia that the patient may, that, uh, with the patient may be present with unexplained non-epileptic seizures, paralysis, or sensory loss. In settings where possessions is part of the cultural beliefs, the fragmented identities of a person who has identity disorder may take a form of spirits, deities, demons, or animals. Intercultural contact may be the influence of characteristics of other identities. For example, a person in India exposed to Western culture may present with an altar who only speaks English. Um, in cultures with highly restrictive social conditions, amnesia is frequently triggered by severe psychological stress such as conflict caused by oppression. Mm. In cultures with highly restrictive social conditions, amnesia is frequently triggered 
by severe psychological stress such as conflict caused by oppression. Finally, the voluntarily induced states of depersonalization can be part of a meditative practices prevalent in many religions and cultures and should not be diagnosed as a disorder. So again, finally, the voluntarily induced states of depersonalization can be part of a meditative practices prevalent in many religions and cultures. So we're not going to say that's what they do, especially you know, like if you catch the Holy Ghost, you know, and just <laughs> y'all know how to do when you catch that Holy Ghost. So we don't want to say that y'all are disassociated. So we got to, you know, keep it 100. Anyway, <laughs> um, anyway, if you want to find out more information, um, please look at uh, NAMNI, which is a National Alliance for the Mentally Ill. You can remain anonymous. Um, you can talk about mental health issues. Uh, you can join the forum. And um, if you feel comfortable with that, give them a, a, a jingle. And their number is 800-950-NAMNI. That's the helpline. 1-800-950-NAMI. Okay? All right. With that being said, y'all go out and make it a wonderful day. And we'll see you next time in the mental house. Bye-bye.